please yeah please slide us yeah uh today is very hard working huh? uh, and so i'm so glad that I uh, introduced the special lecture last uh, six uh, last six uh, title is numerical text techniques for the antenna pattern measurements and RCS measurements and by given given by the professor Jinan Go. Okay. Yeah, Jinan Go, next slide is yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jinan Go, yeah, Department of Electronic Engineering, Gyeongsang National University. Next slide. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, he, has, he was born in the Daegu, Korea. He received the Bachelor degree in electronics from Ina University in Cheon in 1991 and the Master and PhD degrees in electrical engineering from the Syracuse University, Syracuse, New York in 10, 20, uh, 20, oh, He is uh, now a professor with the Department of Electronic Engineering, Engineering Research Institute at Gyeongsang National University. Jinjun, Korea. His current research area includes computational electromagnetic signal processing. He is the author of the two, I'm sorry, two, uh, two books and more than 100 articles. Thank you. Okay, Jinan, please. Yeah. And you can, uh, can I post the computer type pen? Okay, sure, yeah, no problem. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my topic is uh, numerical techniques for antenna pattern measurement and RCS measurement. So I know everybody is kind of tired. I will uh, finish it as soon as possible, okay? Uh, let's see. Actually, my topic is not quite the uh, same as what we have in this uh, seminar, but uh, you can think of it as a, a future collaboration of our work, okay? So first of all, Gyeongsang National University, you might not know this, but... Uh, 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 we are located at Jinju area here, and uh, we are Busan, Seoul. It takes about one and a half hour from uh, Busan, and our campus map is here. We are located at the edge of this campus. So, uh, what we are doing in remote sensing lab, uh, we are doing signal processing for electromagnetics and uh, some numerical techniques for antenna pattern and DOA estimation algorithms, including a uh, radar system and steps and ICS measurement. So now I, I'm going to talk about those two topics now. Uh, let's go for uh, the first one. Usually when you do electromagnetic measurement, you need some place uh, EM wave does not reflect. You cannot measure EM, EM waves in this kind of room. You need an uh, anechoic chamber, like uh, this, kind, uh, this kind of anechoic chamber where uh, these materials uh, absorb electromagnetic waves. It depends on uh, the frequency, the size, it may be depends on the frequency and the material, <coughs> so, uh, uh, the property that absorb EM waves. Okay? This is from uh, Fuji Xerox, Japanese. The next one, this is the world's largest anarchic chamber uh, in uh, California, USA. Edward Air Force Base. The size is about 264, 250 by 70 feet. So a very big airplane like this one can go in and can be measured without any reflection. Of course, we know that uh, this kind of test will cost a lot to make this kind, kind of big anechoic chamber is uh, very expensive. So can we do some measurement without this anchor chamber. That is for our first uh, purpose. Uh, we'd like to investigate the methodology which can extract approximate result for the free space pattern from non anacoid measurement. Uh, there are some previous work here. We also did some work using a chipset polynomial 
I'd like to introduce Miss Richard to you right now. Uh, the first one uh, is from, I think, Spain. This kind of, those uh, people, this book. Okay, uh, what they did was, uh, let's go back to the first picture. Let's hear some reflection. Uh, this is reflector. Uh, the idea from the first uh, reference was that when you send some signal from this uh, antenna to the proof, there's direct, direct path. But if we go to the reflector and go to the proof, it takes more time, right? So the minimum time from this uh, antenna to the reflector and to the proof probably looks like uh, uh, you can calculate because you know the exact uh, A, the size of A, and you know the, uh, the distance. You can calculate the distance from here and here by Pythagorean uh, theorem, right? So you can calculate the time from here to here to here. And then uh, measure the data usually can be done by also expensive uh, network analyzer. And uh, the result might be something like this one. This is a S1 parameter. Maybe you don't know this very well, but uh, except for Professor Lee. This is time domain. Uh, actually, this is brick. I missed one figure. Uh, this is time domain. You can obtain this time domain by taking just the uh, FFT, inverse FFT of the frequency domain. You, are, you guys usually have uh, x-axis in frequency domain and y-axis in the angle domain from that analyzer, right? So you just take the uh, IFFT of the frequency domain and you maybe get the this kind of uh, data. So I told you that after some frequency, uh, no, after some time, which is uh, uh, time duration from from here to hit the uh, reflector and go to pro. After that time, you don't think that this is direct path. Direct path is from here, from here to here. And then you don't you cancel out the path path from here to here and here. So by taking them out, uh, see that there is no signal after some time, right? You you got this data and take the take out the signal. By doing this, you can delete the effect of the reflector. This was called time gating method, and currently, uh, current uh, metal analyzer use this time gating technique. And to put an example, if you think that uh, there's two 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 um, line here, one is measured data with the reflector, which is I think uh, I'm not tell that very clearly, but. Uh, one is ideal case, okay? There is some difference between reflector and with ideal case. Ideal case is, of course, without anything, only measured in a anechoic chamber. By taking the time out, which is uh, in this case, the right hand side case, then you can probably get better response. One is from uh, ideal case, the other one is. Uh, at the time gating method, okay. So this was the result of the uh, from the Spain. We tried to extend it uh, using uh, Bessel chip set polynomial. It looks might be a little bit difficult, but uh, the basically, uh, if you express it uh, orthogonal function, uh, which is Bessel function, the corresponding uh, frequency response would be uh, chipset polynomial, first kind and second kind. So this is the relationship. If you take a, a formulation and take a real part and imaginary part for the st stability of the uh, calculation, also in the frequency domain, 
and you and you get the function by solving linear equation by taking the inverse of this one uh, multiplied by the right hand side. And uh, you can estimate the result using those kind of uh, coefficients. Okay. This is the result. Again, after taking out some time after maybe 27 nanoseconds, then uh, this is the result. There is a three lines here. One is reference, one is uh, with the reflector. Of course, there's something happening here. Uh, you see that the angle is about minus 20 degree to minus 40 degree, which is corresponding to, uh, you go back to the slide here. This is about, this is zero degree here, right? Zero degree. This is plus sign, plus degree, this is minus 20 degree and minus 40 degree. So something happens at those angles, right? It represents uh, here. So something happened here, right? This is uh, 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 due to the reflection. So we, from this red dark line, we could recover it, which is reconstructed. You can see that there's a good uh, correspondence between those two lines. So this was our uh, result. And we further improve the result by using uh, impulse response. Actually, you can think that this impulse response is a, a signature of any room right, with, with the reflector. So there's AUT, this is schematic of uh, the theory. Antenna on the test and proof. Maybe there are several objects, one, two, three, or whatever. And then there is a direct path here, several path with reflections. So what we can do is uh, measure with some reference antenna. Reference measurement first, and then with that result, take the reference out only that makes <clears throat> only signature of any kind of room. Then we, add, with that uh, signature, we can uh, we can restore any damage damage uh, response. Okay, so we think that um, some some pattern with ideal pattern. This is pattern. A is a uh, signature of any kind of room. So you take the uh, convolution, convolution with respect to theta domain, angle domain, not in time domain, that which is usual. So we apply the convolution in uh, angle domain and find out uh, the total response. Actually, this is, this is uh, damaged, I mean, corrupted response because of non anechoic property of any room, okay? Uh, we tried that, we use this as a reference antenna. I did on the test as a phone antenna because phone antenna is a kind of bandwidth a bit wide compared to other antenna and uh, pattern looks also kind of uh, sharp. Okay, so there is, we, we introduce a reflector here and try to measure this kind of room. We assume that there is no reflection, any other reflection, only this reflector here. So we um, measure without the reflector, which is the ideal case of this horn antenna, okay? Uh, this is without reflector, frequency domain, and angle domain. You maybe get this one with uh, network analyzer by using S parameter or something. And we again measure, actually this is simulation, not measurement. Okay, uh, something happens at the angle of maybe uh, 20 to 30, 40 degree. Again, this one is uh, zero degree here, 20 maybe to 30, 40. So something happened at, uh, at those angles. So the problem is that can we obtain 
signature of this room, I mean, this, this figure uh, using those two. Of course, this thing is specialized for phone antenna. So by, by just dividing those two, doesn't give anything, doesn't give me anything. Uh, by dividing those two, we'll give some picture like this one. This one may represent a room, but it also has the property of home. So we have to take out the effect of home. So that, which is this one, uh, this is invent independent to any antenna, right? So we take out the effect of home. With using this one, we try to, uh, okay, this is not, now this is our antenna on the test. Here, same room, same room, we're using uh, this response. You probably get a better result. Uh, this one is a helicopter antenna I showed you before. Here, this guy. This is an idea result. Without reflector, with a reflector, the objective is with a reflector, can you obtain some response, something like this one? We apply the result and got this kind of one. The black one is reflected one, I mean, corrupted one because of the reflection of any kind of the reflector. Uh, the red, red line is ideal case. From the black one, we try to make it uh, the red one. The blue blue line is our result. As you see, there is good match to the original, I mean, the ideal case. This is the uh, uh, amplitude result, and this is the uh, phase result. At frequency, 10 yards, okay? Uh, of course, we, we have to use the similar uh, similar bandwidth uh, AUT as our uh, represent. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense, right? So we try to use again uh, Yagi Uda antenna, which is famous antenna at uh, sizes here, and uh, again same reflector is the same uh, special signature and obtain this kind of result. This red one and uh, blue line matches pretty good, as you see. Uh, this is page result. Again, uh, 90 gigahertz. You can, you can plot it with any frequency. I mean, the, of course, this one gives a uh, certain frequency band, band range. So, this is more serial case. There's four reflectors. There's so many reflections, not only one reflection, but you know, because metal plate reflect so so much uh, reflections. Okay. Uh, looks pretty complicated, but uh, again, this red line and blue lines matches pretty good. Something happens probably here. Uh, the one one thing I want to mention that is if there is a, because this one only consider azimuth uh, directions. If something happens, because if, if something happens to the wall, this wall is too thick, or something happens at the ceiling, at here, it cannot, uh, this method cannot deal with it. So we uh, try, try to formulate it uh, with a 3D impulse response because now impulse response is 2D. I told you that there is a uh, there is a uh, convolution in uh, angle domain, right? Only one angle, azimuth angle. Now, if you extend it to a um, 3D case, you can maybe deal with something at the ceiling or this. Thing. Words get thicker, you can handle all the situations, okay? Uh, so this is a result, uh, this is for recent, recent result. We have uh, 3D cases. I didn't put it uh, exact, uh, exact uh, 
example here. It, again, Yagi Uda antenna, okay? This is a three-dimensional uh, pattern. Elevation angle, this is elevation angle. I think this is uh, <coughs> azimuth angle, right? And we introduced uh, two plates, one at the side, one at the ceiling. So this is the result with the two plate. With this one, we could obtain middle middle figure. Uh, observe the uh, uh, one cut. I think it's one cut. Edmund angle only. Elevation is twenty. Okay, twenty means uh, at here. Okay, this twenty cut it here. Everything. So you probably see. Uh, some uh, discrepancy, one with uh, 2D and uh, 3D cases. Uh, 3D cases looks a little bit better than uh, 2D cases here. Uh, that, uh, that first uh, topic I want to tell you, OK? so. The second one I want to talk about is the radar cross-section thing. So again, uh, uh, electromagnetic measurement issue. But uh, we want to try something, other things, some other things. Again, radar cross-section also, uh, actually radar cross-section does not include anything radar. Looks like radar, but uh, the name is radar, but it actually say that how much reflections came up from any object. I can measure uh, radar cross-section from here. I send some signal and observe some signal and get the, how much, how much uh, power I can get. Uh, the unit is uh, actually sigma. It's uh, not variation in uh, statistics, but in our electromagnetic <coughs> theory, sigma stands for uh, RCS, radar cross-section, okay? Uh, P, input power density, it looks like a watt per square meter. So, and PR is reflected power. So the total uh, unit is, is a square meter. How big is it? Usually, a reflection coefficient does not have any unit. But RCS, radar cross-section have unit, which is square meter. If we uh, have the same, same material and bigger size, we have a bigger reflection. So it means that we have bigger RCS, right? This matters to uh, many cases, especially in military cases, like uh, this kind of airplane. There's two types of RCS, monostatic and bistatic. Monostatic RCS means that if the signal come from this direction and observe this direction, the same direction. Biostatic means uh, instant wave and uh, measure some other direction. That's called biostatic RCS. But we mostly we are dealing with monostatic RCS. This is some example of monostatic RCS. By measuring those RCS, you might think you might get uh, what is this uh, airplane and what what is this. Uh, if, if this is a tool or uh, enemy or friendly. Okay, so the objective is to measure RCS at each direction. Of course, it also depends on frequency. I mean, everybody knows that this airplane is big or small in terms of frequency, right? So uh, RCS is also a strong function of frequency. Oh, because of this one? Let's go back. Oh, here, okay. Okay. Uh, well. Okay, anyway, no problem, okay. Uh, when you measure RCS or big object, access of big object, which is uh, similar, I mean, this has similar meaning. If high frequency or large object has similar meaning in calculation of electromagnetic or measurement, 
Uh, access can create some technological computational resources. Maybe you can use the uh, pair of computing what uh, Professor Kim told me today, for us today. Uh, calculation and real measurement. Obtaining RCS high frequency or large object is quite challenging, challenging task. Because when you try to measure some uh, airplane, the RCS of airplane, you have net to analyze, of course, like this, this circuit. And you transmit some signal and receive some signal. And try to rotate the, uh, this airplane, which need a uh, big plate and try to rotate it. This is a measurement system from uh, Jojondas. And of course, it needs a big anaphoric chamber. Uh, it looks like they, they applied the time gating method. If there's some object here, uh, only measure this one. This reflected one, maybe take just this, take this one out because it takes a longer time. Anyhow. anyhow. Uh, the next one, uh, key comp system, measurement system. Instead of rotating the airplane, it rotate the measurement system rotates the object. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you that um, usually, Genetic measurement, I mean, uh, calculation, it gets more difficult when you have higher frequency. I, must, I, I want to tell you that uh, effect. When you have uh, some field, uh, if this is a system, one uh, sphere, maybe metal sphere, one plate, metal plate, and it's electromagnetic waves uh, try to extend from this side. And if you want to make, measure any signal at this point, this point, calculate signal, then you need to uh, segmentize all structure and calculate all the current at the, all edges, okay? It takes a long time. Usually, you have to solve maximum four equations here. One integral equation and differential equations, it may be very complicated. So people use uh, uh, simulation tools. With already this guy, these things are already very popular, so you can buy those things, costing about uh, ten thousand dollars. I don't know. <laughs> uh, one one thing we pull here. Uh, this one is uh, it shares very small. Uh, market, but this one was developed by uh, my, my uh, this advisor. Okay. Anyway, this is an example of uh, Ripple. So it looks like uh, what? Uh, F15, right? This is F15. Uh, when we try to calculate the ISS uh, at frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, and you have about uh, 246,000 unknowns, and takes about 6.2 6 6 .2 hours with uh, some computer PC. This that's the result, okay? Uh, I want to focus on this thing. The length of this airplane is about 50 meters, and frequency is 2.4. Takes about six hours, okay? How do you segmentize it? There is segmentize of that structure, but how do you make how how small it is you have to make it? Usually, when you try to express a wave, one wavelength, three samples does not look good, right? One wave, two wavelength, maybe a five sample, five sample, okay. But at issue, if you try to represent one wavelength, you have to get at least 10 samples. That means if you have an X band, which is 10 gigahertz, the wavelength is about three centimeter, you need to have sample, maybe three millimeter to make reasonable result. So the rule of thumb, you can say that 
one tenth of the wavelength you have to sample it to model at such frequency. Okay. This shows how difficult when you have higher frequency. The frequency of a certain okay, this is the same I think same one. Uh, oh, I, uh, frequency hundred megahertz, unknown eight thousand. Time only one millisecond. Fine. Frequency three hundred megahertz, eighteen thousand. Simulation time is three hundred second. One gigahertz, this one. Three gigahertz suddenly goes up very fast. So frequency here, number of unknowns is not linear. It's that is uh, exponential. Number of unknowns takes time is also exponential. We multiply those two frequency versus time, very exponential. Okay. So if you want to calculate like the same the same uh, model like this one at extent. Extend is 10 years usually, but our most our most of our uh, military based aircraft generate 10 years of frequency of radar. So you don't have any choice. 10 years of radar uh, may take may take forever. You cannot mean you cannot uh, calculate using a PC based platform. Okay. So this was our uh, model was not great, but uh, so this is where our idea came out. Uh, that one, ten again, ten megahertz is se several seconds, hundred megahertz is less than a minute, two hundred megahertz is uh, two minute, less than two minute, one gigahertz is ten hour. 10 years, it takes maybe several months or years. So can he obtain, uh, with those results, can he try to get some place, some higher frequency uh, result? We try to use uh, the uh, Cauchy method, I mean, rational functions to model uh, frequency domain waves. If you fix that uh, about, this is the angle, right? At zero angle, you get some value. 10 gigahertz, same thing, 100 megahertz, same thing, 200 megahertz. So from those low frequency, if you can get higher frequency data, it might be uh, very efficient in, uh, in terms of uh, cost. So the next thing, those things, uh, uh, the, how to del del derive this uh, equations, how to find this, uh, using process method. Okay, I will skip those things. Uh, there may be some other method. We are trying to do it uh, some other kind of filtering tool, phony method, empty method, those things we are trying now. But I will show you the reserve with process method only now. Uh, this is, uh, if there is one sphere, the analysis may be very um, analytic. Okay, you know the answer, exact answer. You don't need to do uh, simulations. Okay, sphere give you this kind of access. Okay, Henkel function, Bessel functions, looks complicated. Uh, so the problem is that uh, what is uh, P and Q in uh, Cauchy method? That was one of our challenges to find out the. Uh, number of uh, degree, what's the degree in numerator and what's the degree in denominator. We try to uh, analyze this kind of uh, shape and figure out with the different P and Q, this is only simulation, but uh, we have pretty small, small uh, error with uh, this line. So we model this line like P is Q minus one, this good approximation. So we apply these rules, p is p minus one, to all the our uh, calculations. Okay. I will show some numerical examples. This microwave used, and those are the uh, computer 
facility we have now. We modeled this one as Bummer. Uh, I told you that uh, 45 degrees, this is just one degree of four ices, okay? This is frequency. 35 from six, we try to find out the rest using Cauchy's method. Uh, from 35 to six, the rest we can estimate using some other technique. I told you that Kalman filtering, which can estimate uh, some, you know, extrapolate those results. This is just an error. At the 107 degree, uh, again, 3.5 yards to 6 yards, we estimate 6 to 7. You think that, okay, you might think that after 7, what happened? It tried to diverge somehow, but, uh, you know, we cannot, from 1 to 3 yards, we cannot keep it 10 yards, of course. It's like, you know, it's like scam. You don't want to do that. From one to from one to three yards, three to four yards. That's what we want to do. Okay? You don't um, you don't try to deceive anybody. So this is the result uh, of the same uh, model here. Uh, original simulation and resonator using the uh, simulated result at seven years. Okay. So from three to five, we try to estimate at seven. Uh, this looks pretty uh, good result, I think. We only try this thing using simulations, but it can also be used the real data, as, as you see. The second example is drawn here. Again, uh, similar frequency range, we try to estimate the back of the uh, result at the different angle, 7 and 12 degree. Uh, you see that uh, those measurements and estimated was quite, quite good. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, some uh, plot airplane. Again, the same thing happens. Let's go quickly. This is the result, again, looks, looks, looks okay. Okay, the finally we have a result. Uh, with, with the original, we all calculate the result. Uh, we, we used only, uh, we used only uh, example we can calculate. Otherwise, you know, we cannot say this is result is good or not, right? So even Though we take 45 hours, 83 hours, we cannot calculate 10 years, right? Because as you see, we cannot do it. So from this result, and from one to five, we try to estimate five to seven. Zero means less take, it takes less than uh, one minute. So compared to 45 hours and zero hours, zero hour, uh, you can think that our approach takes a good effect with a very reasonable error. There's three uh, examples here. Okay, in summary, we try to apply the rational functions to calculate the RCS and uh, predict RCS at high frequency. I think I have uh, 10 minutes, which is good to uh, have one question, right? Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. I believe uh, any of this will have a question <laughs> on this thing. Have you measured? Have you ever compared compared the uh, similar measures? That that's very good question. I think I I couldn't do it because uh, it's, it's very co important. It costs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you help me. Yeah, <laughs> first topic, uh. I just almost the first topic. Uh, what is the difference between the Innovation chamber and your proposed uh, system. Actually, 
as you know that the demand respiration chamber also doesn't have any observer. It looks a uh, uh, we don't need a we don't need the uh, we don't need an echo chamber. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the reverberation chamber. It has reflections, right? Yeah. Right. So we don't we don't want reverberation chamber. We don't we don't want uh, any reflections. So it's a cost-effective method. Probably it's not very exact, but it's a cost-effective. And the assumption was that uh, it assumed a stationary environment because if there's something happen before and after, it doesn't work, right? So uh, it's stationary. I mean, today, tomorrow, day of tomorrow should be the same in the environment. Uh, as you know, uh, really, uh, data sense is very popular. So Autonomous vehicles. Can you tell us about the advantage of radar sensors compared with this one? Radar. Right, right. Uh, you know, radar, the most bad point for radar is that it has to go hit the uh, uh, object. Radar, you can, you can, you can measure uh, if there is some tree, you can check the people at the tree, right? So that's a good point for radar, but as you know, radar also costs a lot. The cheapest one probably takes about 5,000 US dollar. And that's why uh, what uh, these people do not, some people don't want to use it. Radar probably costs more than that because the resolution for of radar is very low. If you try to, a resolution of radar only determined by this uh, beam, beam width, right? And probably you can uh, add some uh, popular, right, right. Cause uh, uh, you, these days only two radar sensor in front of the car, like left hand side, right hand side, only check if there is something there or not. You cannot recognize which direction is it. So that's the problem of radar. But uh, like military radar, it, it uh, tilt the, uh, the angle, I mean, make the beam very narrow and try to scan it. That might be work, but it again, it will cost a lot, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much.